Hello and welcome to my morning podcast where two books are chosen completely randomly from my bookshelf and then I discuss random parts of the book. So I'm going to try to keep these introductions really short so we can jump straight to the book. So the first book that got chosen, which I was actually really happy about because it's one of my favorite books, it's um, really inspiring for writers. Um, so the book is called Your Creative Writing Masterclass, featuring um, more than a hundred contemporary and classic authors. So advice from the best on writing successful novels, screenplays and short stories. So authors such as Jane Austen, Charles Dickens, Ernest Hemingway. And it's written by Jürgen Wolf. I think that's how you pronounce it. Was it Jürgen Wolf? I'm not sure. Also, I'd like to apologize in advance for any stumbling. I will do in this podcast because it is a one take show so no editing it's just completely raw unfiltered and uh, no preparation it's all improv so I don't I never know what book is going to get chosen ahead of time or what page I'll be opening and talking about okay enough <laughs> enough of me explaining that stuff so I'm just going to uh, read a couple of quotes from the back of the book the blurb so the first quote is by Anton Chekhov I don't know how to pronounce that, Chekhov. Um, it's a really lovely quote, actually. Don't tell me the moon is shining. Show me the glint of light on broken glass. That's so lovely, isn't it? And also that kind of reminds me of um, this advice that I heard that the best way of writing is to show the personality of your character and not to tell like who this character is. So it's show, not tell. So that's what separates really good writing from not so good writing. Um, I actually, yeah. Okay, so the next quote I'm going to quote is from Mark Twain. And I really like this quote. I notice you use plain, simple language, short words, and brief sentences. That is the way to write English. It is the modern way and the best way. Stick to it. Don't let fluff and flowers and robosity creep in. I love that word, robosity. I think that, I um, can't remember exactly, I can't really explain what it means. But um, it's like when you, over I'm not even going to try to explain that word. So <laughs> um, I came, first came across that word when I was trying to teach myself um, one of Chopin's Nocturne, Op 9, number 2, I think, and I really liked it. And then I googled about Chopin Nocturnes because I really love his Nocturnes. It's just so melancholy and so beautiful. And then I came across verbosity where some pianists add like extra flowery things to the music piece or something like that. I can't remember. Anyways, I think you'll find a better explanation of what that word, word means. <clears throat> I haven't even started reading from the book. I'm already rambling. <laughs> okay, so bit of some random quotes from the blurb. So if you dream of being a writer, why not learn from the best? In your creative writing masterclass, you'll find ideas, techniques, and encouragement from the most admired and respected contemporary and classic authors, including Charles Dickens, Jane Austen, and Anton Chekhov. Shekhov, I'm probably pronouncing it really horribly. Um, and then, so the writing coach, the author, helps you translate these I insights into action to master your craft and write what only you can write. So you are you, you are unique. Only you can write the way you write. So, you know, people always worry about, oh, I don't know what my voice is. You already have a voice because you're already unique. So don't even worry about it. Just write how you write, you know, so, um, and then it just talks about what kind of, uh, so in the book, you've got from Mary Shelley to Stephen King, and it guides you from finding your style, generating story ideas, creating vivid characters, constructing powerful plots, overcoming writer's block, and crafting your ideal writer's life. So it's brimming with support and suggested activities develop, to develop your writing skills. 
the book also so then it just talks about like exercises and stuff like that so I'm not gonna labor that point so let's get to it so I'm just gonna read a couple of highlighted bits that I've done in the past I've read I've probably read yeah I haven't read that much of it probably a few chapters in the past so one of the quotes I passed me highlighted is um, the writers quoted in these pages invested not only their time but also their heart and soul in what they wrote. So writing is is quite um, it's like being vulnerable because you're allowing other people to see what's going on inside your head, and you really open yourself up, and you are literally not literally, metaphorically speaking, you know, opening your heart and showing, you know, what's inside through your writing. They accepted the fact that writing well requires courage, perseverance and an independent spirit. That doesn't mean they always had confidence in what they were writing, though. As you'll read, many of them experienced anxiety every time they faced a blank page and sometimes they felt like imposters for daring to assume or even hope that others would find their words of interest. But they continued anyway, and their willingness to tread this difficult path has brought enjoyment and enlightenment to millions around the world. And so um, then he's like really encouraging. If you are ready to embark on your own version of that adventure, this book is for you. So I think every writer or every creative has that imposter syndrome. Like, you know, they don't really know what they're doing. It's an actual psychological phenomenon. You can Google it when people just think, oh, I'm just faking it. I don't really know what I'm doing. So it's a real psychological phenomenon called imposter syndrome. So this is a really nice quote. He talks about how um, the, the importance of letting ideas germinate. So almost like you have ideas, they're like seeds, and you plant them into soil, and then you let them germinate, you let them sprout. And the way you do that is that your subconscious mind can then do some of the work before you even move to your computer, to your laptop, to your keyboard, to your notebook and you know start writing so a lot of creative work actually possibly gets done subconsciously while we're not even consciously aware of it and then we have that aha moment and that epiphany like oh my gosh that's such an amazing idea that I just came up with um, but I think it's because your subconscious it was just like working on it in the background while you weren't directly thinking about it so I like this next bit. He talks about creating cra creating characters that come alive on the page and live on in the memory of readers or moviegoers. That's so true. There are some amazing fictional characters that I just love so much. And even though I know they're imaginary, <laughs> they're, they're not real, but I think there's someone that says that, you know, your mind doesn't really know the difference between what real and is what, is imagined that's why we feel so connected to these fictional characters because our mind thinks they are real and and we just we're just so fond of them and love them so much and feel inspired by them as well i think that's oh this this part of the podcast is already coming up to nine minutes and i haven't even <laughs> got to like the main part of the book so i'm i'm gonna do a part two and i'll catch you in the next one Hello and welcome back to part two of reading from the book, Your Creative Writing Masterclass. So the next part he talks about is how to let the dialogue reflect your characters and also the, the experience of sometimes the characters seem to be taking over the story. So a lot of writers find that when they create a character, they almost seem to have a life of their own, even though the writer created the character and They'll do things or they'll say things that even surprises the author. I find that as well, like when I create a character from a story and I start imagining what they're going to say and, and then they do something like, oh, I wasn't expecting them to say that or do that. 
it's almost like they're they become alive in my mind and take on their own sort of entity or something it's it's actually quite fun cuz even you as an author you as the creative can get surprised and enjoy how the story unfolds um and then he talks about how to deal with critics especially the harsh inner critic that we all have and so the idea of the book was to create a masterclass that one can only dream of uh Charles Dickens drops in to demonstrate how to create exciting characters Ernest Hemingway helps you to figure out how to write concisely and powerfully and Jane Austen shows you how to make the reader warm to an unsympathetic character and so his hope is that their examples will help you create what only you can write in the way that works best for you i love that i really i'm going to say that again so basically he wants to inspire you to create what only you can write in the way that works best for you so there's loads of writing styles but you choose whatever resonates with you personally how you just naturally write so that's that's your voice Okay, so that was the introduction and now I'm just going to randomly read from a few pages that got randomly selected. So the first bit is uh from advice to action. So this is a part of the chapter where he calls for an action. Um so one of the great delights of being a writer is that we can create our own worlds and they can be much more satisfactory than the one we live in in our fictional world the bookworm can be popular the skinny kid can get even with the bullies wait this is getting too autobiographical <laughs> that's quite funny seriously you don't have to write a misery memoir to take advantage of the therapeutic effects of writing about the things that have troubled you or still do so almost he's like suggesting that writing is cathartic like i think charles dickens um inspiration for oliver's twist is from his own experience and and then he created this wonderful story so then the call of action is take an inventory of the ways you have found life unsatisfactory which of them might make the basis of a story you'd like to write so this comes back to joseph campbell's a hero's journey um if you haven't seen it i highly recommend it there's a youtube doc there's a documentary on youtube that you can watch and explains the archetype of every person's journey and story and film how there's like a call to action and the the protagonist changes from from who they are to who they become through the journey so so before we move on to the next random page i just want to quote um the writer and the creator of the film taxi driver i've not seen it but it's really famous with robert de niro everyone's seen that really famous line of him <laughs> when he's talking to the mirror and he's saying you're looking at me i'm not going to try to imitate robert de niro but you know which scene i mean so the author talks about the writer of taxi driver and what he said poor schrader uh, my marriage broke i was in debt i had an ulcer i had no place to stay i had quit the american film institute i spent 3 weeks cruising in my car along the sewers of the city i was living in a metal box surrounded by people but absolutely alone i came to screenplay writing as self therapy cuz writing is very therapeutic it really really is there's something very cathartic when you write things down physically so not just having it in in your head i feel like when you write it down releases you almost and it's like your brain can stop thinking about it and ruminating over it 
this um, reminds me of uh, what Brené Brown does. She has this technique of if something's really, really bothering her and she can't stop thinking about it and it's like, she's like, she feels really angry or she feels really upset, she'll, um, she'll just write it all down unfiltered, as angry as she wants and, and, and she'll call it my, I'm going to censor myself, but my S dry, uh, draft, my... Um, well, I'm going to have to think of another word. Okay, so it's my poopy first. <laughs> no, that's even worse. Basically, her first, uh, let's call it a zero draft. That's actually from another author. Um, and she just like puts it all down. So almost like oh, I do that technique as well. I call it my black hole journal. And whenever something happens and I'm really upset about it but I don't want to talk to anybody about it because I don't want to burden them or I don't want them to come even if they have you know good intentions they might come and say something that will make me feel even worse or because they'll view it from their filter they'll view it from their point of view it's like what Phil Good says that other people will come from their own um, viewpoint and they won't necessarily understand it from your point of view. Some people will, of course. There's some amazing, empathetic people. So I just write it all down. I call it my black hole journal, and then it, I feel better afterwards. Because <laughs> I can just release it. I can just put it all down. And I don't reread it again or anything like that. Sometimes I, I might do, and I'd be like, wow, past me was really angry, and I almost make myself laugh because things I say when I'm angry is just almost it's so over the top it's almost comical anyways that was a tangent let's get back to the writer of the taxi driver so he came to screenplay writing as self-therapy I wrote about a taxi driver who was full of anger suicidal I needed the power of art if I didn't separate from this person he was becoming me or I was becoming him that's how I created Travis Bickle. So that's really interesting. So, okay, so the next random page that got chosen is chapter three Solitude and Dreams. Modern studies of creativity have confirmed that ideas often come when we are not chasing them. But that's not a new finding. Francis Bacon, senior, advised write down the thoughts of the moment. Those that come unsought for are commonly the most valuable. So I'll say that again. Write down the thoughts of the moment. So those ones that epiphanies, those aha moments that you get that just seem to come out of nowhere, write them down because we think, oh yeah, well, I'll remember it. But sometimes we don't. We're like, oh, what was that great idea I had? So just keep a little book around you or just write it down on your phone. You know, it's amazing. We always have our phone with us. So just have a notepad and just jot it down. So Nietzsche, Frederick Nietzsche advocated solitary exercise as a stimulus. We do not belong to those who have ideas only among books when stimulated by books. It is our habit to think outdoors, walking, leaping, climbing, dancing, preferably on lonely mountains or near the sea where even the trails become thoughtful. I love that. Um, that reminds me of something Jason Silver said, who's this amazing philosopher, modern day philosopher, and he creates these... Oh, this is coming up to 10 minutes. Um, I'll talk about it in part three. Hello and welcome back to part three, uh, reading from the book, Your Creative Writing Masterclass. So as I was saying, Jason Silver, if you've not watched his Shots of All videos, you are in for a treat. I have mentioned him in a previous podcast, but he's just really amazing and he inspires me. So he creates these two minute bite sized espresso shots of philosophical musings. It's, it's like he's streaming his unconscious thoughts and it's like he's channeling and they're wonderful and basically he combines his um his talking of these philosophical ideas and concepts with visual imagery and music and it's just and it's there are only two minutes and they're such a delight to watch and because they're only two minutes they're just really quick to watch and that he has some 
he has so many on like different subjects like you know why do we cry when we're watching a film you know why do we do that and I was wondering I was like yeah that is weird why do we do that and it's not because we are sad it's actually because the moment that we are watching is more beautiful than we could ever imagine so it's that reverence it's that allness is that a word but it's like wow you know you're just completely blown away I'm like getting goosebumps just saying this but yeah so I really really highly recommend him Jason Silva S-I-L-V-A and um, he talks about how he reads a lot and he's thinking and then he'll go for a walk out in you know in a park or some big vista area just somewhere outside and then all of a sudden he'll get an epiphany and he'll start talking and luckily he has cameramen around him and they'll start recording him in the moment he's having these great epiphanies so okay so let's get back to the book um so Friedrich Nietzsche I'm just going to say this quote again because it's it's really good we do not belong to those who have ideas only among books when stimulated by books. It is our habit to think outdoors, walking, leaping, climbing, dancing, preferably on lonely mountains or near the sea where even the trails become thoughtful. So what you're saying basically is naturally we are inclined to have our great ideas while we're walking outdoors. And I also find that as well when I'm walking in the park I, that's why I love walking in the park and creating my audio journals for myself where I just talk about anything that comes to my mind, just basically about my life, my goals, my thoughts on random things. And it's a, it's a completely private audio journal for myself, for my future self. And it feels really cathartic. It's very therapeutic and I just love it because uh, there's no filter and so I can talk about anything and go off on random tangents, repeat myself <laughs> a thousand times and not worry about it. So I, I find that sometimes when I'm talking about something over and over again, it's probably because my mind just needs to get it out or something. And um, yeah, and I love being by the ocean. I love being by the sea. I love being by the beach. I find it really grounding. There's just something about the sea, the waves crashing on the beach the salty sea air, the sound of the waves, I absolutely love. And I love grounding myself by walking barefoot on the shoreline. So where the sea meets the sand and the sand is all soft and squishy and the waves slowly just wash over my feet as I walk along the shoreline. It's so calming. It's my, honestly, it's my favorite thing to do. I absolutely love doing that. Okay, that was a really large tangent. <laughs> Let's get back to the book. So Henry Miller went a step further. What the budding artist needs is the privilege of wrestling with his problems in solitude. And now and then a piece of, oh, that's weird. I'll just, <laughs> um, he just had a piece of, you know, food or something. And then we can follow Frank's, Franz Kafka yet further. You do not, le you do not need to leave your room. Oh, I like that because I'm not leaving my room right now to record this podcast. <laughs> I'm literally in my bedroom. You do not need to leave your room. Remain sitting at your table and listen. Do not even listen. Simply wait. Be quiet, still and solitary. The world will freely offer itself to you to be unmasked. It has no choice. It will roll in ecstasy at your feet. Ooh, I like that. So basically what he's um, saying is that when we are alone, that's when we can really tap into our subconscious. We can really tap into our own ideas and our own thoughts and feelings. So we're not bombarded by other people's ideas or anything like that. This actually reminds me what I watched yesterday. So yesterday I was feeling really overwhelmed by how much content is out there on YouTube that I really want to consume so content about philosophy about content about spirituality and and it's just like I just want it all downloaded in my brain like in like like the film Matrix when Keanu Reeves you know downloads how to do 
I had to do karate or kung fu. And then he's like, oh, I know kung fu. I almost want to bypass, you know. I just want it all in my brain. But then I'm like, why do I want it all in my brain? You know, the the joy should be, you know, learning about it slowly. So, and then I was like, you know, how do you, you know, how do you deal with that? And so there was this really nice video by Jarvis. Oh, I've forgotten his name now. Jarvis something. He's a really good uh YouTube YouTuber talks about creativity, interviews amazing people like he had this amazing interview with Brené Brown. Okay. I'm going to have to I don't have my iPad. I can't google it. Jarvis something. But anyway, <clears throat> he talked about how the balance between consuming content and then creating your own stuff. So he was like, you know, in the beginning you can consume and and create. You could be like balanced half and half, but then slowly, slowly spend more time creating your own stuff and consuming less. But, you know, still consume other other content because you'll get inspiration and stuff like that. And, yeah, it was just really inspiring. And then I had this amazing um, answer given to me from the queen of intuition. She's really great. You can follow her on Instagram. And it just, it was really weird because I was, I had like half an hour before she created the live, I, I, I shot off a huge rocket of desire. Like I was like, Oh my God, I just want to consume all the, inf all the spiritual information out there into my head, but it's really overwhelming. And I just had this, you know, I've been thinking about this for a very long time, but then, and so then I was like, you know, how can I deal with this? And then she gave the most beautiful answer in her life. Like she took the time to, she took the time to give me the perfect answer. And it was amazing. She was like, you know, go, you know, go within, you know, follow your intuition. You've consumed, you know, enough spiritual content, but now trust your own intuition. And I thought it was just really lovely. Um, I'm going to try to find the actual quote that she said and, maybe transcribe it so then I can share it um but it was it was amazing and then I thought oh my gosh you know my angel guys made that happen that I would get the answer so that was really that was really cool so yes yeah, so that comes back to what I was saying about Jarvis something oh, I can't remember his name but um hold on let me just look it up on my iPad Okay, I'm back. I don't know why <laughs> I said hold on as if you're going to wait for me while I go to the other room to get my iPad because I literally just put the podcast on pause. Anyway, I found it. Yay. So it's Chase Jarvis. I, he's a wonderful YouTuber. I'm going to try to find what his about me says about him. One second. So he's really big on um, like how to create things so yeah so this video so chase jarvis so the video that i watched yesterday is the title is less consuming more doing daily creative so he answers this question from somebody who's saying you know how do i balance between creating creating my own stuff but also consuming content and he gives a wonderful answer so i highly uh can recommend going on youtube and um, looking that up so just type in Chase Jarvis, J-A-R-V-I-S, and the title of the video is Less Consuming, More Doing. Okay, so I'm going to finish this part of the podcast and start a new one because, you know, IGTV <laughs> only has a 10-minute limit. So, yeah, Instagram really needs to start making them longer. So that that I think that should be, like, the next thing. Like, at least make it an hour so people don't have to watch things in parts or listen to things in parts hello and welcome back to part four of reading from the book your creative writing masterclass so wow i'm talking so much about this one book i'm already on part four <laughs> i think it's because of the queen of intuition she really inspired me last night she was like go for it then start your podcast you know and i think she just put some light goes into me <laughs> it was like a really amazing live session i highly highly recommend you guys go watch it 
Um, it'll be in her live story. I hope she keeps it up as a IGTV video. I'm, I think I'm actually going to DM her and ask her if she can do that. She's so sweet. She um, said to me, you know, you know, DM me and I'm going to help you with, you know, your idea of wanting to create a podcast. So I'm going to do that today. So thank you so much. So, okay. So I just want to talk about how um, the writer talks about Charles Dickens and his writing process. Um, Charles Dickens was a master of finding a healthy balance of solitude and convivial... I don't even know what that word is. Convivility? Probably his life. I think that's probably what it means. His biographer, Michael Slater, reveals that Dickens... Normal daily routine was four hours at his desk in the morning, then a 12-mile walk in the afternoon. Oh my gosh, 12 miles? That is impressive. Um, one of my favorite um, beaches in England is Broadstairs, which is only about an hour and a bit from King's Cross. So it's really easy to get to. And that was actually one of Charles Dickens' favorite places to walk um, and get his inspiration so whenever I go there I just think oh my god Charles Dickens used to walk on this beach and there's actually a museum dedicated to Charles Dickens there as well that was a bit of a tangent sorry <laughs> so then a 12 mile walk in the afternoon then dinner frequently including house guests and party games until bedtime Slater suggests that many of the ideas Dickens translated into prose in those four hours occurred to him during the walks. Wow. So he writes, on 21st of June, Dickens found he needed an exceptionally long country walk of 14 miles to begin thinking through what he later called, with reference to the whole novel, David Copperfield, that very complicated interve interweaving of truth and fiction. Amazing. Okay, so then the writer is um, calls... From advice to action. So uh, um, he says, it's ironic that the simplest activities, sitting quietly on a park bench, sitting quietly on a park bench for an hour or taking an aimless stroll through a new neighborhood, seem to have turned into luxuries. Walk down any street and you'll see that half or more of your fellow pedestrians are talking or texting on their phones or listening to music. They're here, but their minds are somewhere else. The drive toward 24-7 connectivity means that the traditional oasis of calm, 15 minutes sipping a coffee at a sidewalk cafe or 10 minutes browsing in a bookshop are no longer safe from interruption. The benefits of technology are awesome, but as someone observed, Every silver lining has a cloud. And for writers, the elimination of solitude is one great big cum cumulus, cumulus. So his call for action is, you still have a choice. You can leave behind your mobile phone and go for a walk. You can turn on the answer machine and take, take a long bath. You can go to a park and meditate. And in the stillness of those moments, you can begin to conceive a story that only you can tell. Only you can tell. Try scheduling at least 15 minutes a day of such uninterrupted time. So I love that. I really love that. And also that reminds me of what Chase Jarvis was saying last night that I wanted to say is that he says that first thing in the morning, create your own stuff without consuming other people's content. So he's like, if you want to share a photograph, um, do it. So he says, like, for example, if you want to share a photograph, work on it first thing in the morning without uh, consuming anybody else's content, but that without looking at anyone else's work, you know, that way you won't be so influenced by other people's work and won't think, oh, my photograph's not good enough. Other people's work is better or, or anything like that. It's just, it's just you and your work. So he suggests not going on social media and looking at other people's work, but sharing your stuff first and then afterwards looking at other people's work. So do your stuff first and then look at other people's work. So that's really good. And that's what I do, actually. I don't go on social media first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, I do my own creative stuff and like 
this morning. I, 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 I do listen to YouTube videos though. I do love listening to YouTube videos. So, and while I'm washing up, getting ready, and then I'll record my morning podcast, which I'm doing right now. Okay, so I'm going to end the po- this part of the podcast uh, about this book right here. So I thank you so much for listening and I hope you enjoy the random rambling. So I will now catch you in the next podcast with the next book. Thank you for now. <laughs>